Hello everybody! I've had a week off. Did you notice? Did you miss me? The realisation when the answer is no. Today though we're answering a simple yet massive question. How much RAM do you actually need for your gaming computer? And if you're thinking that you've seen this before, Linus did this two or three years ago, well that was two or three years ago. We've got new games, we've got new systems, so how much RAM do you actually need? A quick recap, if you need it, RAM comes in sticks. You usually use two for dual channel operation. If you only use one, then you're only actually getting half the speed, which can be quite detrimental to games. So you always need to have two sticks in your system. Random access memory typically looks something along the lines of this, where you have quite a low profile design, but nothing really too fancy. It's not gonna be the coolest RAM, quite literally. Or you can get something like the Dominator, which is usually a fair bit more expensive. It has a larger heatsink, but most people will be more interested in the fact that it has some lovely RGB that you can fully customize in software. When you're shopping for RAM, you need to look at the capacity and the speed. The capacity is what we're testing here today, 8, 16, 32. But then there's also the speed. So this one is actually rated for a maximum of 4,133 megahertz. But the thing is, when you put this in your system, nine times out of 10, or almost 10 times out of 10, to be honest with you, this is not actually gonna be running at this speed. Instead, you're gonna to have to boot into the BIOS and then enable the XMP profile that's usually on pretty much every stick of gaming RAM these days, and that will actually then run it at the correct speed. But please don't go thinking that this is actually gonna guarantee that you'll be able to run at this speed, as your processor and your motherboard do actually have a lot to say about how fast your memory can run. And just because it says a speed doesn't mean you're going to be able to get it. Anything really over 4,000 megahertz can be quite difficult to get fully stable, and the advantages for gaming is not really something that I think is gonna make a big amount of difference, but that's something we'll be testing in the future. Arguably though, the most common speed at the moment is 3,200 megahertz, which is what we're using to test here today. So let's do this then, shall we kick off our test? And actually the first thing that I wanna show you is just how much RAM a normal gaming computer can actually use just idling. So here we have pretty much all of the launchers, so we have Epic, we have Origin, Battle.net, everything open, and Discord. And you can see in the Performance tab, we're actually already using six gig of RAM before we open up a game. And if we take it a step further by opening up Google Chrome, you can see that number has actually jumped now to around about 6.5, 6.6 gigabytes of memory. And this is for just three tabs. So if you imagine you're someone that wants to be playing a game, maybe on one monitor while doing a load of things on the other, you can really start to see how this number is gonna start to add up. We're gonna start off with one of the heaviest games you can play right now, Watch Dogs Legions with ray tracing, everything ultra and DLSS. And our first result is 45 frames a second. So if you spend an insane amount of money on a gaming computer and you wanna play maxed out Watch Dogs, you're not actually able to get 60 frames a second at 4K. That's just how intense this game is. But remember, this is best case scenario, 32 gigabytes of RAM. I will run this test again, this time at 1080p. As for all we know, there could be a big difference between resolutions. Maybe you need more RAM for playing at 4K, but less at 1080p. Or maybe it's the other way around. Let's find out. But I know what you're thinking. Watch Dogs Legion. Does anyone actually play that? Well, how about some Cyberpunk? Another game that was super successful. Once again, this is running at 4K, this time the Ray Tracing Ultra preset, and we're gonna do something really boring, which is just walk up and down this street to get a good idea of the frame rate. I mean, I say walk up and down, I'm literally just pressing the W key until the timer goes out, because that's how you get consistency. And I'm scientific, science-centric. Science Studio, oh no, that's taken. We also have our multiplayer titles, some Call of Duty Warzone, and everybody's favorite, Fortnite, and true story, I actually won my first ever game of Fortnite the other day, which probably isn't the biggest claim in the world, but bear in mind I don't play it. I was impressed. Got like nine kills, because I'm good. So good that I only got my first win this weekend. Awesome stuff then. That is all of our tests complete for 32 gigabytes of RAM. All we need to do now is downgrade our system by removing two of our sticks. Safety first, of course. We've shut our system fully down and turned it off at the wall. We now want to make sure that we're using slots two and four, so I'm going to remove RAM from slots one and three. That's actually surprisingly hot. Ow, yep. Our system is probably going to have a little bit of a freak out and be like, where's the memory gone? You can see that the default speed is actually 2133, so it's a big difference by enabling this XMP profile. We've got all of the same startup applications that we had open before, so things like Epic, Origin, Steam, Discord, and as before, we're using around about five gigabytes of RAM just idling in the desktop. Which I guess means it's time for me to do some more benchmarking. I would do it live, but if it's gonna be boring for me, it would be very boring for you. 
sad Marcus. Well, actually, it's more like time-consuming, Marcus. The 16 gigabyte results are in, which means it's time to actually test our eight gigabyte sticks, which are gonna be slightly different, because don't forget, if we did just use one single stick of this Corsair Dominator, it would be running in single channel mode, which would be slow and definitely not a fair test. So we're gonna use two of these. It is a little bit unfortunate, though, as this is the only set of memory that I have on hand that is a two times four for a total of eight, and this runs at 2400 megahertz, not the same 3200 like we see on the Corsair kit. Interestingly, opening up the task manager, we are still using that five gigabytes of RAM just in the system. So even though I thought we'd be using slightly less, it doesn't actually seem to be the case. It is still allocating more or less exactly the same amount of memory, maybe a hundred megabytes less. There's definitely not much in it. But what will happen with the games? You're going to find out. Ow, and I'm gonna hit the wall. Games like Watch Dogs Legion do actually recommend 16 gigabytes of RAM if you do wanna play at the highest settings. So I'm expecting to see a fair bit of difference really between eight and 16. Our first result, ladies and gentlemen, and we have an average of 59 FPS at 1080p, which is way lower than we saw at 32 and 16. That is a massive difference from something that is actually a pretty, well, not only a very cheap upgrade, but very simple to do. Will the result be better or worse at 4K? Well, we went from 45 frames a second at 32 to 45 frames a second at 16, and we've dropped ever so slightly to 43 at eight, but fundamentally the GPU load is still at 100%. So I wouldn't really say that this is outside the margin of error. So clearly here it's not been a huge factor, but it's definitely a little bit too close for comfort. Moving on to some cyberpunk. It's not like there's any sudden stutter or anything that I can really feel when I'm walking about the street. So at first glance, it doesn't seem like there's anything to complain about at 4K. 88 frames a second at 1080p. So that's another game where we're actually losing around about 10 to 15% of the performance just by not having enough RAM. However, at 4K, we did actually see very similar results to Watch Dogs Legion where there wasn't really anything in it. We lost one FPS versus 16 and then three versus 32. So all within that margin of error. But don't go thinking that you need less RAM as you go up in resolution. It's just that your system resources are being used to push all of those extra pixels and you're being limited by your GPU or your CPU rather than being RAM limited like we were at 1080p. Game number three. Fortnite, and I've got to drop in exactly the same place every time. I can tell you that at 4K, it's pretty much exactly the same story, more or less exactly the same FPS. But at 1080p, we did actually have 304 with 16 gigabytes of RAM, whereas we're now getting 274 frames a second. That's still a huge amount of FPS, but it is a noticeable drop for eight gigabytes. Clearly, it's just not enough anymore. Which leads us on to our final game then, Call of Duty Warzone 4K DLSS. I'm actually expecting to see a difference despite the fact that it is 4K, but we shall find out. Not after a short word from this video sponsor because there isn't one, because I was off rather than actually trying to make some money. I was actually spending it all down the garden center. All of that YouTube money, it's gone on a new cherry tree. It's gone on some bedding plants that the dog has already ruined. Some grass seed and some compost. I'm an exciting chap. Here we go then, the final result. We went from 129 FPS to 133, so no real change. Will we get something similar? The answer is no, 120 frames a second. And this is substantial because this is actually running at that 4K DLSS resolution. So if you're gonna be running at 1440p or 1080p, then clearly this is gonna be more pronounced. So what have we learned here today? Well, to be honest, pretty much everything I've been telling you guys really for the last year or so on the old PC-centric builds, that 16 gigabytes of RAM is not necessarily just the sweet spot, but it's what you should be going for if you're looking at getting a gaming PC. Because if you get eight gigabytes, then it's not gonna be enough. You're gonna run into certain limitations. But then if you go for 32 gigabytes of RAM, then this is gonna cost you an extra, what? 100, potentially 125 pounds. And that is money that normally you'd be able to pump into the graphics card or the processor, and that would then yield even higher frames a second. But do you agree with this? Do you think that you would go for 32 for the extra longevity? or have you still got eight? And to be honest, for what you've got, it's working fine. I would love to hear from you, so do let me know down in the comment section below. If you wanna upgrade your RAM, I'll leave some links with my Amazon affiliate links listed down below so you can check out the best prices, I guess, and some of my favorite kits. But thank you so much for watching. Smash that like button if you've enjoyed it. Get subscribed for more just like this. And if you have any ideas for future videos that you want to see, let me know down in that comment section below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.